Well, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, everybody. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. This week, I'd like to present a time-lapse video of part of the Masabi and Western Railroad build up in Minnesota. I really hope my viewers enjoy it because it's taken me a lot longer to edit this video than I've ever spent before. So please let me know in the comments below whether you think the result was worth it. Upon arrival, the first order of business was, of course, to reassemble the helix. Here we've got the first section still on the side so we can attach the legs. And then we decided to get rid of the T-nuts on the bottom because that wasn't going to be an effective way of leveling on carpet. Now obviously it has to go back together in the reverse order from what it came apart. So here we've just attached parts two and three and I'm now repairing the track that got damaged during disassembly. If you recall I mentioned a couple of areas where that happened. It didn't take very long, just a few minutes. The big section went in next and that was a lot easier to put back together with help than it was to take it apart without help. It's one of those cases where an extra pair of hands really makes a big difference. So after hooking up all the rail joiners and the feeder wires, then we can get on with the other two parts of the lower helix. First the piece by the wall, and then after that the one in the middle of the room. I helped remove the keeper plates first. Now I'm hooking up rail joiners and feeder wires. I also had a track buckle to fix at the other end of the helix. You may have seen me do that. And now the bridge section across the middle of the lower helix goes in, which also includes part of the upper Y and the start of the upper helix. And now I am repairing the other area of track that I damaged. And now there's some small pieces at this side of the helix to put in. There's the tail track for the upper Y the bridge across the back, and two small pieces of roadbed. You just saw my helper take the first section of upper deck round to the other side of the wall while I continue to hook up feeders and rail joiners. Now we've got the foundation pieces for the upper helix going in. There's no track on those. They just support the two halves of the top helix. First one has been screwed in. Before we could get the second one in, we had to make some slight adjustments to the base of the main helix because the floor wasn't perfectly level and there was a few legs that needed shimming up. And now we're done. On the morning of day two, we started off by getting the ledger boards on the wall for the lower level staging bench work. And here we're putting the frames up temporarily. At this point, all the legs are too long We've still got to get all the levels right, and then we'll cut the legs to the right length. Here I've strung the front, and I'm gradually getting the section straight by wedging the back, and then just screwing them a little bit at a time, until the bench work is in exactly the right place. And then I moved over to the other side. Here I am getting the ledger boards on the wall which are at an angle to support the grade down from the reversing loop. And now I'm getting these frames temporarily set up in the right places, once again using clamps. I have to take my time at this point. It's important to get the levels right. If you recall, I have to lose one and a half inches between the two staging yards, and I wanted to get the end section completely flat and level because there'll be tracks crossing through the opening on the diagonal and I don't want to run into problems later on. So I took my time getting that right. And now I'm putting the ledger boards on the wall for the second level while we still have easy access and I can just stand in the lower frames. Next is on to plywood tops. We've got the first two sheets here. I had to trim the end of the first one because it wasn't quite square. And now while my helper is cutting the next few pieces, I'm making a start on the ledger boards on the other side of the wall. I have to cut the second piece, not quite in half. The bit I cut off will be used on the upper deck so there's no wastage. And now I'm just test fitting the piece that goes through the opening in the middle. 
And before I can attach the end one, I have a whole load of additional wiring holes to drill, which didn't get done. And I'm now taking the opportunity to install the bus wires before I get too many tops on. It's a lot easier doing it standing up than rolling along on my back as I'm doing right now. It's a lot of bus wires to put in. And now I can permanently install the next few pieces of plywood. I had to cut a corner out of the one that goes through the middle to allow for the grey coming up from the reversing loop. And then once that's done and everything's fitting right, I can screw them down permanently. The piece in the middle didn't break anywhere near joist, so I had to add some splice plates underneath it. And now it's just a matter of working my way around and getting the rest of the plywood tops in. Before I go on to the next step, I've got a few little adjustments to make. I wasn't happy with the virtual curve at the top of the grade, so I took that piece out and modified it slightly. And the result was a lot better. With the staging yard bench work complete, I was just getting ready to start gluing down the foam rubber track bed when I realised there was a few other things I needed to do first, like putting out drop cloths just in case of any overspray from the spray adhesive. And I also wanted to get the wireless receiver installed on top of the dividing wall because I figured it would have better reception there than stuck in the corner of the room. And with that done, I could then get back to installing the road bed, just starting at one end, installing it one sheet at a time working my way down the first side and then around the end of the bench work. I didn't put any road bed over that last sheet of plywood that you can see there through the opening. That's because I wanted to get the plywood cut off first. And to do that, I had to lay out the full size track plan. Here I'm marking out the positions of the staging yard tracks for this first side. And now we're snapping chalk lines because that is the easiest way of positioning the straight track. And then I was finally able to cut the plywood off over the far side. Now before I'm ready to lay the track, you'll see I'm systematically working my way from back to front, marking out all the track centre lines. Of course by the time I finish doing this, the track plan is shredded, but by now it's done its job so I can just throw it away. Well now it's time for some track laying. And I started right at the end of the peninsula with all the curved turnouts because it's always best to start with the most critical areas. And normally that is mainline curves and ladders. And where you have turnouts on the curves, those are always going to be the most critical. Unfortunately, the camera wasn't pointing in quite the right direction, so I started slightly out of the frame. But I quickly got round the corner into the view, and I just started systematically working from one end to the other. I joined the turnouts together in twos and threes, because I don't want to have to install feeders to every little piece of track. I don't go more than about six feet between expansion gaps, and I usually keep it at less than that. So I worked my way from the back to the front. There was four separate groups of turnouts to install. I got three of them down. And I wanted to make a how-to video while I was installing that first set at the front. But just as I got ready to do it, some guys showed up to fix the stereo system and I had a lot of loud music in the background. So I delayed making that video slightly while I worked on some of the straight track at the back of the staging yard. After laying about a box of plain track, I went back to making the video segment. You may have noticed that I'm using cans of food as weights on top of the track, wherever it doesn't sit properly. And then it is back to straight tracks. All the turnouts at this end are installed. I've still got a few missing at the far end, but I'll get to those later. And I have to put down several boxes of straight track before I can get there. I found a whole bunch of micro-engineering flex track which I wanted to use up. As you can see, I, had, I needed a lot more weight on those because I just didn't want to stay straight. 
and the width of the cans meant that I could only put down alternate tracks. I had to leave it there for a couple of hours while I worked on other areas and then come back and fill in the intermediate tracks. This is probably the biggest staging yard I've ever built and it took me more than a day to lay the track over this one side. I got it almost done. I still had a few yards of track and half a dozen turnouts left at the end. When I get down there, you can see the benefits of having plenty of space between the layers. I was able to basically climb completely in between the two levels of the bench work, making access easy, even on the rear tracks. Where it's necessary to put staging yards closer to the main deck, then obviously they can't be as wide. So here you see I've changed my shirt. So obviously this is the next morning where I was just finishing up. And that was 15 staging tracks, ranging from 12 to about 20 feet long. Now with the one staging yard done, I moved the camera around to the other side of the wall. You can see that I hadn't permanently attached the top for this first area of bench work. That's because I wanted to work on the track that went through the wall while I could still reach it better. It's a lot easier to climb in the framing than it is to reach over it. So I got the road bed glued down and while the glue was setting up, I went back to the far end to install some of the foam rubber sheets under the far end of the staging yard. And then I came back and finished the track in this awkward area through the wall. With that done, I can permanently attach the last piece of plywood and then finish putting the rubber sheets under the staging yard. The last piece was about a quarter inch short of what I needed to fit it. So rather than two piece it, I just got some help to stretch it. One sheet came delaminated, I had to cut part of it out and redo it, but it was no big deal. Now I'm setting out the track template again and marking all the track centers before getting the chalk line and my helper again to snap lines for, for the straight track. And my intention with putting the camera down at this end for this staging yard was that whereas the other side I started close up and worked my way down away from the camera, this time I wanted to start at the far end and work my way towards it, just to give a slightly different viewpoint. Unfortunately, things didn't quite go according to plan. The camera broke down one day before I finished it. I got most of the turnouts prepped for the staging yard proper. And then I left the front edge. I wanted to get the turnout ladder for the diesel storage yard installed while I could still walk on the bench work without fear of damaging the track. Made it a lot easier. So I've got about a dozen turnouts in that back area, in that rear area to install. And then I went back to the front. You know, I'm closing the gap along the incline down to the return loop. And then I found a problem with the track just before it went through the wall. I don't remember the exact nature of it but I'm pretty diligent at making sure my track is bulletproof and obviously there's an imperfection there that I, I thought needed to be improved. And on this particular day, the client came home early from work and surprised me and we had quite a long conversation before I was able to get back to work again. 
Not that I'm complaining. It was great to touch base with him, make sure we're both on the same page. Other than that, he just kept out of my way and let me work, which is the ideal arrangement, just to let me loose on the railroad and then check in with me occasionally. Now, while I was working on the diesel yard and finishing off the turnouts at the front, the client's maintenance guy, who had me my helper periodically, he was having fun of his own, trying to fish a wire through the ceiling. Eventually went and got a bigger ladder, and then he was able to get the wire through. And shortly after the camera cut out, I was able to make quick progress down towards this end. Unfortunately, we weren't able to see it. Well, unfortunately, that's all I have. My GoPro broke down about halfway through the trip. It was starting to give trouble early on. You may have noticed that some of the camera angles were not ideal. That's because the screen wasn't working and I had to guess what I was pointing at. I did intend replacing the camera since the hotel I was staying at was right next to Best Buy and I had the ideal opportunity. But I procrastinated on it since the next few days were going to be wiring and switch machines where there wasn't going to be anything to show anyway. And then it just got out of mind and I forgot to do it. So I ended up not being able to present the second half of what would have been, I think, a very enjoyable video. But I hope you enjoyed the bit that I was able to present and I hope to see you again next week. Thanks for watching and bye for now.